What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to be taking a look at this Minchin Beagle camera. Now this is one of those cameras that take those awesome time-lapse videos that you've seen not only in mine but in other people's videos as well which basically so you don't see the print head while it's moving around it moves it to a certain spot takes a photo and continues on so let's go ahead let's get this opened up and let's see what's inside so here we have the quick start guide few little stickers to go along with it. Here we have the camera itself. Power adapter. And the cords you're going to need. Here's a little thing in case you need to hit the little reset button, you can. So this camera does come with the little micro SD card that's already inserted inside the camera. Apparently it's a little hard to get out. There we go. I'll just leave it in for the time being. So in order to get this plugged in, I just need the adapter, the big long provided cord. I could plug that into there. And the other cord goes right into the side. Now I will be using this on the Elegu Neptune 3 Max and this camera is compatible with just about every printer I have. Now on their website, it does say the Lego Neptune 3 Pro. It doesn't say anything about the Max, but considering they're all pretty much the same, I don't see why this won't work. So from there, I can just take the USB, plug it into the back of the camera itself. And the other end goes right into the printer. Now, I don't have an actual stand for this, but I'm just going to go and use their box that it came with and just set it right on top like that. So I'm going to go hop over into Kira and I'm going to show you all how this works. So here we are over in Kira and I just grabbed this image of a golem or some cool looking thing. So what I like about this is I don't need to go into extensions, post-processing, modify the G-code, click on time-lapse and do any of that. The camera does it all internally so I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is adjust whatever settings that I want this to be, which I'm just gonna leave this all to default with the printing temperature of 200, the build plate at 60, print speed I'll just leave at 60, support I'm not gonna use any. I don't need a raft, I'm just gonna set this to just the skirt, and that's about it. So I'll just go ahead and click slice. I'll let this process, and that's basically all you need to do. Once that's done, I can save this onto the little micro SD card, plug it into the back of the camera, and that's it. So once this is done slicing, we'll head back over to the camera and plug it in. Now this does say it's going to take five hours and 24 minutes and use approximately 61 grams. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to save this to the removable drive and click save. And that's it. I'll eject this and now we can head right back over to the camera. So now that I have this saved on the flash drive, all I need to do is take it out and insert it into the camera. Now we'll get this all plugged in, powered on and we'll go from there. So I did need to download the BeaglePrint app and connect it to my Wi-Fi to get it to work. 
But once you do, you can click on it, and now you can see that it's working. There is a slight delay, but it is going over Wi-Fi, so of course there's gonna be most likely a little delay. But it's now connected to the machine, and I can move this over if I need to. Let me get it out of the way so you can see. So in order to go and make the time lapse, we can click on the little settings icon and you can set the time zone, Wi-Fi settings. I'm going to click on time lapse settings. And this very first top one, we can click on clean time lapse, which is what I want. It has timer, it has normal, there's different options. But the clean one is what you want if you don't want to see the print head and it makes it move around. So everything else I'm just going to leave alone the retract speed for this printer and everything else and we're just going to see how this works. So once we click on save we can go back and I can click on the little temperature and I can start preheating this so I can edit this. Set the hot end, yes, we'll click save. Bed temp 60, yes, I'll click save. So now this will start heating up the machine. And I can move this over if I want to, I don't need to. And now this kind of kicked on that the fan did, so now that it's heating. So once that's heated up, I can go ahead and I can click print. And then it will start. And as you can see right here, it is heating up. So we'll let this go and we'll be back right after that. So one other thing I do like about this is that I don't need to leave this running while it's going. I can just close out of this app, turn it off, and I don't need it to have it running while it's going. But at any given time, I can go right back into it, click on it, monitor it, and see what's actually happening. So I'm gonna let this print and let it do its thing, and we'll be back in about five hours when this is finished. All right, so there you have it. You saw how that worked. Let's take a little look at this golem guy. I think that turned out awesome. I do like that I didn't have really any stringing involved. There wasn't anything falling off or extruding extra while I was printing this, while it did the time lapse. Now, based on some of your printers, you may have to adjust some of the fine settings like the retractment speed and the length and all that. So you might need to fine tune it, but for me, basically right out of the box, I didn't really have to touch anything. And on the Lego Neptune 3 Max, I think that worked perfectly. It didn't have to adjust anything. So this camera comes with everything you're going to need right out of the box. It'll come with the cords, depending on what type of printer you have. It comes with all the power cords, the adapters, and if you're in a different country, it'll come with a different plug. I do like that they are always updating their firmware to work with more printers. So if yours isn't on their list that they show, maybe down the road it will. But for me, it works on all the Elego printers I have. It works on my FL Sun Super Racer. It works on the Snapmaker. It works on the Kaiwu. It works basically on every printer that I use all the time. So for me, that's awesome. Updating the firmware was a breeze. All you have to do is just remove the little TF card in the side, plug it into your computer, go to their website, download the firmware, basically turn off, unplug everything, plug it in, power it on, and it will automatically update the firmware for you so you don't have to do anything. I think the look of this camera is pretty cool. Looks just like a little puppy. So it does have a little mounting bracket underneath. So I don't have an actual mounting bracket for this just yet, but I'll probably either 3D print one or find one online or something that I can use to mount this a little better. Because as you saw, while it was moving, my table isn't the sturdiest and it kind of wobbles. So while the printer was going, the camera was kind of wobbling a little bit as well. So I don't really have it set up the best as of right now, but maybe I can get it mounted somewhere just to keep it a little bit more still.
So before I was using one of these little remotes and a little gadget I set up in Cura so that every time it moved, it hit the button to take a photo that I just had it hooked up to my camera. And now that worked. This is just so much easier and so much simpler. This is by far the easiest way to make a time lapse that I've seen, which you don't have to do anything. You basically just slice it in Cura like you normally would and just load it into the camera itself and it does everything for you. So this is easily the best way to do it that I've seen so far. So for this camera, I think this is only $79 at the time right now, maybe 69, but you really can't go wrong with that. And if you're not using it for 3D printing, you can set it up somewhere as a security device and you can log in on your phone through the app and you can monitor it from anywhere at any given time you want to. So I hope you all found this video helpful. I would definitely, definitely recommend everyone that has a 3D printer, if you like taking time-lapse videos, pick one of these up. It is definitely worth it. The price is right. It's not real expensive and it's not poorly made. It is lightweight. It is more or less just plastic, but it's powerful and it works perfectly. So if you're one of those people that like to take time lapses and you like to show what you do and you don't want to see the print head moving around while you do it, I highly recommend picking one of these up, but I will put a link down below on where you can get this. But that's going to be it for this video, everyone. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.